Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Role play. In this episode, we're going to talk about the DM shortage and the problems that a DM might have putting together a game group. Yeah, why is there a shortage of DMs and GMs in society today? You know, back, back way back when, it seemed like everybody wanted to DM or GM a game. <laughs> it was a creative uh, release, I think, for yeah. people. Creative output. They wanted to, you know, create a game, a scenario, uh, you know, a world or whatever, and they wanted to uh, have the group of people playing it you know it used to be in the day that we uh we would plan for a day and play for weeks yeah you know and our games were you know four four plus hours long sure just like typical sure you know, now now our games typically run about, about six. six six to eight hours yeah. you know depending how everything goes but typically yeah. about six yeah six hours and it it does take a lot more work nowadays to plan ahead now actually with me i don't do a ton of planning. I have my ideas kind of there, and then I throw them out to the players, and the players do and what they want, and I kind of go with the flow and already have the idea kind of going. So it's, yeah. it's a lot easier for me, but I still, at times, it takes me many weeks to plan for a campaign or what's going to happen. You know, it, it's a lot of work. Oh, well, yeah, but okay, so we play Pathfinder. Now, Pathfinder is right. a little more uh, involved than I would think like D&D &D 5e is. Uh, D and D five E, from what I hear, because I've never played it, from what I hear is more DM led. They lead the characters along a pathway. Uh, so that means, to, in my mind, when I hear that, that's more like playing a more linear computer game. You know, where you just follow a path and it's really not open world. Uh, Pathfinder is really open world, so it takes longer to complete a Pathfinder scenario than it would be on a on a. 5e scenario because there's more things that can happen. I would, I would disagree with that, that they're both about the same when it comes to planning. Now, D&D &D does not have 5e does not have the rule set that Pathfinder has. No. There's a lot more vagueness to it. There you go. Now, I don't know if it's from the people you work with that play that you kind of hear that. But from what my experience is, is even D&D even &D does take planning to, to happen. And, well, unless, yeah. and even if you're running a module, a canned adventure, you still have to read through it and kind of get to know it and understand it. Well, sure. I mean, yeah, but that. But what I'm saying is that Pathfinder is so, so complex and so involved that, and there's so many things that could happen. And, and combat is a lot slower in Pathfinder than it is in 5e. Yeah. So that's why the game could take longer, and that's why I kind of have the suspicion that it's a lot more difficult to find a DM who's willing to run a Pathfinder campaign because it is a lot more involved. Well, I think it's harder to find a player players in Pathfinder general, at least well even second edition, at least around where we live. Uh, finding players that want to play first edition is is a struggle. We managed to put together a group here about oh, not quite a year ago. It's not and easy. We've been we've been lucky. Yeah. To have had that, but having you know coming up with with D and D players, I think is a lot easier because everyone wants to. to to play D and D, they hear Dungeons and Dragons and they jump on the bandwagon. Instead of Pathfinder, they don't know it. it's an unknown game. Yeah, it's not always easy to find a lot of players. I mean, you know, living in rural Appalachia like we do, uh, <laughs> it's a lot easier. It's a lot harder to find, you know, um, you know, general D and D players, and you know, within just a, a playing building a scenario. But then to find DMs is really hard. I thought we lived in the backwoods of Idaho. Close enough. <laughs> So you know, there's there's that coming up coming up with players. Yeah, you know, so it, that that's makes it a little bit tougher. And and while there's less DMs or GMs, because trying to trying to plan out and form a group, that's not an easy thing to do. You I know, you can you can go out on forums, and we've yeah, got a meetups, yeah. and we've got you know Discord and things mm -hmm. like that. But it's not easy. You see somebody say, you know, I'm looking for an RPG game, and you say, hey, you know, we're playing Pathfinder. No, I want to play Dungeons and Dragons. That's because people have been indoctrinated into believing that Dungeons and Dragons is the only way to play a fantasy game scenario. Right. But even then, it's hard to put together, you know, get to get a dungeon master for even Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's a lot of work. Well, it's a lot of work and so I I blame the rise of computer games for that. Because computer games provide you and I play computer games. Delaney plays computer games. Yeah, it's not like playing. we're innocent of anything here, but computer games provide you with instant gratification 
you're already you turn there. On the computer, you launch the yeah. program, and boom, you jump into Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, you're already there. You're playing the game. You're already, you know, you don't. There's no build up. You're just running around, hacking, flashing. Role playing games, tabletop role playing games, are a lot more difficult. There's other things that you have to become very involved with. You have to build a character. You have to create a scenario, and these can take time, and they can take a lot of time. And really, what the RPG games that we play, they're really more social interaction. And we're going to get to this, but one of the big problems today that we have in this world, even pre-COVID and post-COVID, is people are really afraid of social interaction. Yeah, yeah. The next reason, I would say, is the ever-changing rules and editions. Yeah. You know, you start look off with... The, look at these stacks of books. They're all different editions and well, all kinds of... different editions, different game systems. Yeah. But you look at... Okay, you, you start off with first edition. And in first edition, we had the Player's Handbook, the DMG... The Monster Manual, and then not long after we had the DMG, yeah. and then we had uh, Fiend Folio and Unearthed Arcana and the Monster Manual too. Seven books. Okay, no, there were there were some other things in there, mainly modules. Yeah. But it wasn't all this other stuff. This wasn't this bloat of of game manuals. So it was a lot easier to go out and buy just a player's handbook, and I think we paid twelve bucks for that book. Yeah, that's a lot back then. That's yeah, probably was, like sixty bucks right. now. I think it was fifteen bucks for the for the DMG. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that was a lot of money, but compared to a book now, which you're paying sixty bucks for, yeah, you know, it it starts to add up. And then when you're adding in, when you start getting into Dungeons and Dragons, you got your player's handbook. Yeah. Oh, and this is a funny thing. So when when we had our Pathfinder group, and fourth edition was out, mm -hmm. and then they announced fifth edition. We had a bunch of players jump because they wanted to jump to fifth edition, yeah. and the, the reason was was they won't have as many rule books. Ha 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 ha! I have to laugh at that one because you got your players' handbooks, you got your DMG again, you got all your flavors of monster manuals. But if you're going to DM, you know you don't you're not going to want just monster manual one. You're going to want monster manual two yeah. and monster yeah. manual three and bestiary whatever. Yeah, and then you got. Uh, Unearthed Arcana and Mordenkainen's Book to Magic and all this stuff and it starts adding up as a DM and and when you you start adding up that's a small fortune yeah and then when the next edition comes out well then you dump all that or shove all that get rid of it maybe you keep it I actually had first edition second edition three three point five a couple of fourth edition books I think one or two and then some fifth edition books that I've gotten but my first edition, you know, we started running out of space, and it's like I just I, I have, I'm not using this, so I ended up getting rid of them, mm -hmm. which you know I'm kind of bummed about, but you know you can't you can't always keep this stuff around. No, no. You know, it just it's collecting dust. It can get damaged, and and what are you using it for? Collecting. Well, I would yeah. guess. I mean, that's all you've got yeah. it for because you're not going to use it. Well, if you're not going to use yeah. it, then you're just a collector. And and with my first edition setup, yeah. some one of my boys wanted the first edition books and and when i you know when they went to go live someplace else i let them have some yeah. of the books and it broke up my whole collection yeah so then it wasn't complete and i thought well if it's not complete i'm not going to keep it and in second edition i thought well i'm not playing second edition anymore we'll dump it we've, we've kept our third and 3.5 editions yeah just because they are relatable to even pathfinder so we've kept that so you got this this added on expense of buying all these different books and all these different modules and and all this other stuff miniatures and everything else it gets to be a real expense it does i remember when our group originally broke up and we had the we had the people wanted to wanted to go to 5e right away and they were getting really mad because we didn't want to and i brought up the fact i said look right now you're breaking up our pathfinder book our group because you want to go to 5e and you think you're not going to have to buy a whole bunch of books or whatever what happens when they go what happens when they create 60 or 70 or mm -hmm. 80 are you just going to jump from one to the other yeah why can't you find one system that works well and create your world and your actions within that system you don't have to just jump to what's ever new to new you know the new iphone 14 15 16 20 25 30 yeah. you know go with what works and stick with it because you know that's the nature of humanity is you know, is to is to just constantly try to find something that's new all the time in, instead of sticking with something that works. Yeah. You know, that's our consumerist culture. You know, and and the thing is, is yeah, you got tons and tons of books. Well, yeah, we got piles of three 
books and three five books and everything and after a while it gets the well, point, even our star wars d20 yeah you know and after a while it's like look how many more of these books <laughs> are we going to have to buy because you know I can understand why a DM is going to look at that and go, man, I don't want to buy 20 books, just yeah. a DM. Yeah, and then you know? and then when the next one comes out, you know, when it's not when it's not 5th edition, it's 6th edition, or, or now they're going to call it 5th edition revised, which is supposedly going to work with the 5th edition, but yet they're taking out things like the half elk and yeah. elf and half orc and things like that. It's yeah. just, but they're supposedly cross-compatible, okay? I'm sorry, but... We know how companies work and how they have to make money. They got to yeah. keep releasing something upon something upon something yeah. upon something and re redoing everything instead of just adding in some more more mm -hmm. stuff that people might want. They just keep adding in more yeah. whatever. That would be like re-releasing all the Star Wars toys. Well, we know that the first Star Wars toys are collectible, but when they start releasing all this and that and everything else, the collector's going to get them, but. Those aren't going to be the ones of value. It's going to be the older editions yeah. that are of value. Yeah. In fact, if you go out and try and buy a first edition player's handbook, you can get it on eBay, but you're going to be paying seventy plus dollars for a yeah. damaged book. Yeah, that's a damaged book. Yeah. So the value there is, you know, it, the book may have value in the long run, but the newer ones aren't going to have the value that the older ones do. True. True. So you've got that. You've got your ever-changing rules and additions, yep. and, and it gets old having to, to keep buying all these books. It gets real old. I know I hate doing it. You know? Well, that's it, what I mean. Mm, Stick with one system, right. yeah. and that's it. Vague rules. Well, you know, you know we always say about Pathfinder, they've got rules for everything. Yeah. And that's true. And that goes for second edition Pathfinder as well. Yeah. So I don't know about the D&D &D stuff, how they've got... I mean, I think they leave it open to interpretation sometimes. Yeah. Which is fine. The problem is, is when you've got a rules lawyer in your group who wants to argue about every little thing, you know. Well, I had my dagger out. What, you're walking down the stairs with your dagger out? Yeah. Well, why are you going to walk down the stairs with your dagger out? People think you're going to try to kill them. You're in a tavern. It's during the daytime. You're going down to get a drink, and you've got your dagger out? Yeah, I've got my dagger out. I'm ready. What are you getting ready to do? Kill somebody? No, just walk, I just walk around with my dagger out all the time. What? <laughs> you walk around with your dagger out all the time? Yeah, I'm ready to go every time, every time. So you can never get me surprised. <clears throat> so you're never caught flat-footed. No, I've always got my dagger out. Ugh. Okay, you know, you're, you're on the river and you're fighting and there's waves. Okay, I want you to do this. Oh, but wait, last time you had us do that, this. No, no, uh, uh. No, I, I, this is how I want you to do it. But last time, no, you said to do it this way. No, no, he said to do it this way. No, no, they said to do it that way. So you get this vagueness yeah. and cons inconsistency. Your DM has to always try and be consistent and come up with rules, and that takes time. Once more, plan for a week, play for a day. People just, mm. people, I mean, it, it comes down to kind of how pe people are now that they're, they're a lot less social. They don't like to argue. They don't like to confront anything. They don't like there to be a social confrontation. And so that's the problem with a lot of DMs is they just don't want to be caught in this confrontation with yeah. players. Yeah. So you got your vague rules. And then you've got, you know, players who think the DMs should allow everything and every rules. Well, you know, I, I want to play in this rule book. Well, I don't allow that rule book. Well, I've got it. I bought it. I want to, I want to have that rule. Yeah. Well, I don't want to allow the bunny character. I don't want to allow the dolphin I character. I want to play a dolphin. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we're in the desert. That's a desert dolphin. Okay. A desert dolphin, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I, I, I wanna, I'm, a, I'm a druid, and I want to play, I want to turn into an, a, a, a hookalaka mukachaka, which is an animal in your world. Have you ever seen one? No. Well, what do you know about them? Nothing. Well, how can you turn into it? Well, I know they exist, so I can turn into it. <laughs> Just once, I want you to go ahead and let them do that. So they create like a claymation version of the animal. So they're like this unformed glob of clay because they've heard about it, but they don't really yeah. know what it looks like. Congratulations, you want to change into a, a near deer. Well, unfortunately, you look like a glob of unformed clay oozing around on the ground because you've never actually seen a near deer. I want to summon a devil. Well, devils don't exist in my world. 
well, they exist in the book, so therefore they got to exist in your realm. No, they don't exist in my realm. Well, I, I'm not going to play then if I can't summon a devil. Yeah, I don't want to play then. Okay. Or, you All know, right. so, so you get that. So, you know, they want you to allow everything, and then they get mad at the DM when the DM yeah. says, no, this is my rules and my game, and they don't allow it. There's things that Delaney doesn't allow. Right? Oh, monks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't have monks in my world. <laughs> yeah, because... no monks. Because it, not, we're talking kung fu monks. No monks. And right. the thing is, is that, you know, you want a monk? A monk is like, you know, a medieval monk with a with the robe and had the barrel of beer. A monastery, it's a monastery. Rice. That's a monk. Okay. You know, there's other things, too, that Delaney doesn't like. You know, when Delaney says core rule book only... Core rule book only. Yeah, you're not, not like playing, you're not you playing know. your tiefling whatever. Exactly, it's, it's you not know, in the core rule book of that book. Right, you can't drag something up from some forgotten odd book of an, of another world and try to stick it in and say, yeah, I want to use this spell. It's like that spell's not in the core rule book. Yeah, well, but it's in D and D. I don't care. It's not in the core rule book. You can't use it. You know, and then it becomes a big right. fight because they want to. You know, they want to have a transmute lead into gold spell. And it's like, it's not in the core rule book. You can't use it. But I want to use it, you know. And then and it becomes a big fight. We had a character, we had a player one time who wanted to, who just, he was just stuck on this magic carpet idea. He wanted to have a magic carpet. So, so he, he could, could fly everywhere. Fly, fly around faster. on a magic carpet and travel fast on a magic carpet. Magic carpets don't exist in my realm. We're going to find a way to get a magic carpet. They don't exist in my realm. You know, and it led to a lot of tension, yeah. and the tension escalated, escalated, and escalated to the point where eventually that that player left, for other reasons. But there's that was part of the reason. Yeah. The thing is, is the DM runs the game. The DM al- says yeah. what's allowed. The DM says what's not allowed, and that's just what players have to understand. Is when the DM, because the DM's putting out the work to create the game. Players just sit there. They create a character, and then they just sit there. Waiting for the DM to give him direction. That's what happens. Or when you're a DM and you find something that's that's broken in that you think in your world, so you change the rules yeah. and the player gets combative because you changed the rules. No, 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 you didn't say that at the start of the game. Well, I'm sorry because at the start of the game, I didn't see how broken this was going to cause something in my world, yeah. so I'm not going to allow it. Well, no, you can't do that. Well, no, mm-hmm. you can because the DM can. Right, and the that's DM. the thing. You know, you don't want to argue with the DM. It's like, you know, the guy with the T-shirt says, "Don't argue with the DM," and then he's sitting there arguing with the DM. Yeah. You know, it's like, look, don't argue with the DM. Yeah. This is their DM, world. DM rules. So, there, you know, there was always this suspicion when I started first started playing, and we used to talk about this. Argumentative players get killed. Their characters get killed off. You know, they're like always starting a fight. They're the one that falls down the, the, the trap down the stairs into the pit full of spikes. Because, you know, the DM's just like, okay, uh, who's a, who's in front? Uh, okay, Leonard, Leonard. All right, Leonard, uh, I need you to roll D20. I uh, you rolled a four. Okay, I'm sorry. The trap door opens in front of you. You slide down a slide, and there's, uh, I need to make a save. Uh, you got to make a save of 27 and above. Well, there's no way I can make a save of a 27 and above because I only got a plus three. Ah, okay, so the most you could roll is a 23. Yeah, ah, I'm sorry. You know, uh, it's full of spikes down there. You're dead. That's it. And you're, and no one wants to go down and get your body. And it's like, well, mm-hmm. you, you know, you were an argumentative player. You know, you, you, you vexed the DM. You made them mad. That was always the, the like the superstitious legend that I had. It's like don't piss off the DM because you know either you're gonna fall down a spike trap or a mind flare is gonna grab you, or you're gonna Something. get turned into a into an unlucky toad. <laughs> Something's gonna happen. Yeah. You know? So you know that's another reason why you know there's a lack of DMs is they don't want to deal with combative players or yeah, rules lawyers. They, rules lawyers they just want to argue. Yeah. Then you've got you know, you've got the players who 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 don't want X in the game. Well, I, I don't like spiders. I don't care if it's a fake spider. I don't care if it's a toy spider. You cannot have spiders in your game. We've had that. We've had and that. This, this player was so afraid of spiders. We pull out a, a miniature spider. Yeah, she would freak she out. 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 I mean, it's like, look, that's a fake spider. And she would, one time we were playing, and this was at our old place, which wasn't ideally the, the cleanest place. It was just like an old building. It was just an old apartment, yeah. junkie apartment. and... I looked up in the corner of the kitchen, and there was a little spider up there. I said, oh, hey, look, there's a spider up in the corner. She freaked out. 
because yeah. there was a spider up in the corner packed of the Packed up her ceiling. books and left. <laughs> yeah, packed up her shit and left. It's like, look, I mean, I don't know how you can survive in this world if you're that afraid of spiders. It sounds like you need professional help. I understand, but you probably need professional help. People don't want that in the game. They don't want demons in the game because they're Christians. Yay. They don't want certain kind of monsters in there because they're, you know, I don't like those kind of monsters. Yeah. You can't have them. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you're a player. Don't tell the DM what to do. Yeah. So, you know, and then you add into that, and then players want the social agreement. You know, that you won't allow X, Y, Z, and yeah. ABC, and whatever else. Yeah. And that gets to be a lot of work. That, you know, you can't have violence, and you can't have spiders or insects, or you can't have cats because they're afraid of cats, or they're allergic to cats, or, you know, you can't have, uh, you can't have LGBT IQ, you can't have whatever, you know. Look, I mean, we, we talked to a person who we thought was going to join the game, and that person wanted Delaney to sign this social contract to guarantee that in the game there wouldn't be any violence against women, there wouldn't be any uh, you know, any kind of certain kind of violence. There wouldn't kind of be any kind of like certain magic. No that description would be, of blood. No description of blood. There wouldn't be any magic that would degrade people. The, all this stuff. And it was almost like uh, it was this kind of weird. It handicapped. Handicapped. Yeah. It was handicapping me in a game. Yeah. It was kind of this weird sort of. You know, you know and I understand about how people don't want to be in a social situation, you know, that doesn't you know, meet their expectations or whatever, or they feel that they don't want to be, they want to be in a safe space. It's like, I understand, okay? There's probably no more safer space in this world that I can think of that that is an accepting gaming group yeah. who likes you because it doesn't matter if you're LGBT, you're trans, you're gender non-defined, it doesn't matter. You know, you're your friends black, are there. You're Hispanic, yeah, you're any race, race, you're deformed. Yeah, you're anything, whatever. handicapped, whatever. You know, any any kind of place like that when you're there with your friends they're accepting they care about you they want you to have a good time they all want it but they also want to team together and solve a quest and in that quest there could be all sorts of things happening people might get killed there could be some flames it could be a monster there could be all kind of stuff yeah you know you just have to accept that that's just how it is yeah when it comes to social you know social norms in our games the only two real rules that we have are don't talk politics yeah and don't argue with the DM. Don't talk religion. Don't talk religion. Yeah, and don't argue with the DM. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I would say that we've been very accepting of people throughout all our games. Yeah. And very, we've created, we've really worked hard to create a very good safe space. Yeah. You know, around our players because we want them to have that safe space. And that includes people who are the, in, in the LGBTIQ Absolutely. community. Absolutely. And we... we we, you know, we advertise that. We're Absolutely, are we are we are progressive and accepting as a group. You know, that's just the way it is. But then there's always some people who have to push it a lot harder to try to get you to somehow fall into their yeah. weird political, social category. They're just used to bending everybody else to their will, and sometimes it doesn't work. And don't argue with the DM. Yeah. Yeah. So to sum up. <laughs> There is well, a then, shortage. Then, then, then the last thing is the players that just want to just drop in whenever they feel like it. Oh yeah, the drop-in player. Yeah, you know, uh, no DM wants to have to you know plan for a group of six and all of a sudden they're down to four just yeah. because Joe doesn't feel like showing up for the game. He wants to go play hockey or he wants to yeah. go to Central City or or hey, my buddy from from out of town, fifty miles down the road came in today and yeah. uh, we're gonna hang out together instead. Yeah. Um. You know, it takes a commitment to play. Why in the world would a DM commit to creating a world and a scenario for players to play in when that DM realizes that the players won't even commit? You know, so it's very discouraging. Yeah, they just want the drop-in game. They yeah. want to show up. They want to show up whenever. They don't want to show up, up Monday night. They want to show up to the Pathfinder night. Society game, yeah. which is at the local gaming store. And they can, yeah. you know, play their fourth-level character for four hours and then not have to worry about it until next time that... There's a game that they want to play. You know, hey, I'm free, you know, I'll show up this night. Or... Yeah, you know, I mean, that's why people, you know, they want, to con they want to create a big game group with like eight or nine characters because they know half of them aren't going to show up any given time. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, yeah, drop-in players. It makes it tough for the DM. And it really does. to deal with the drop-in player. It's all about commitment. Yeah. 
You know, the DM is committing to, to create an adventure, a campaign, and that's a lot of hard work. And nobody wants to make all that hard work to plan for your game, and then not everyone, you got one, two players show up for the game. Yeah. You know, and then you got to try and play the game. That's that. very discouraging. It's it's tough. Yeah, very discouraging. Very tough. So, to sum up then, there's a shortage of DMs. Why there's a shortage of DMs? Well, we just talked about it. We just presented a lot of reasons yeah. that we think there is. I, what do you think? Why do you think yeah, there's a shortage of Yeah, I mean, why would you think that there is? Um, t- and it's not just Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder. It could it's be Call any, of Cthulhu. Yeah, it could Vampire, be any role-playing it's game. It's Traveler. It's yeah. Starfinder. It's whatever. Um, from my own point of view, my own personal view, and this is why, and uh, you know, I'm I'm the pot calling the kettle black here, and this I know it's not completely fair. But the reason why I've never DM'd is because I'm not the kind of player who understands the rules very well. I'm there for the social aspect of it. I'm there for the role playing aspect of it. I like to play within other people's games. Do I have my own ideas? Sure, sure I do. Would I ever DM? Yeah, I would DM in the future, and I would do it. But it would have to be within a game where I understood all the rules. Uh, you know, I have a... <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. You know, it's it's over an inch and a quarter thick in 800 pages, and there's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> and I feel intimidated. And that's not by, even monsters. That's just yeah. to play in, in GM. Yeah, I feel intimidated by it. So it's I, I think that a lot of times it's probably better for someone who has more of that personality to be a DM. And, you know, to be fair, I don't usually test the DM when it comes to wacky rules. To me, it's like, okay, the DM doesn't want this. All right, then I'll do something else. Yeah. You know, I started out DMing in, in 79, and the guy I learned from told me to go out and buy the rule book. So I went out and bought the J.R. Combs book, and I read through it, and I played it, and I wanted to keep playing some more. So how can I play some more? Well, I can't go to school, you know, every day of the week and play. And it was whenever we could at school. Yeah. And it was just he and I, and I tried to get my cousin involved who, who loved fantasy, but he didn't want to get involved. He was he was too busy smoking pot and <laughs> doing other things. So, you know, it was just limited. So I went home, and the young boy that I babysat, you know, I taught him. And then we found some other people in the neighborhood that wanted to play, and we started playing, and we got our own group together. There you go. So, you know, I became a DM, and I found other players and other people, and, you know, we, we rotated DMs. Now, we've had that in the past in our group where we've had rotating DMs, but then they've left. It's left me. Yeah. So right they, now I'm... They leave and they take their game with uh, them. And, I've, you know, and as a DM, you can go through burnout. You when can. you never get to play and you always DM, you can you can start to burn out. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so there's that, there's that side of it too. So, yeah. you, you know, why is there a shortage? Well, the cost of books, having to know the rules... Players that, that just don't want to cooperate. Um, time. time. You know, it, it takes effort. time. Effort. Time and effort. You know, we, all work, effort. we all work eight-hour days, eight-hour days, 40 hours a week, sometimes yeah. more. Yeah. And that takes time. And we want to relax with our families or we want to mm-hmm. relax doing the other things that we like to do, our outdoorsy yeah. stuff, whether yeah. it be going for walks or hikes or, or biking or, or yeah. going playing tennis or, or, or going to movies and whatever else. So it takes a dedication. It does. And that's not always easy this day and age. You know, the society demands so much more of us than yeah. what, you know, we all have. That's true. So, folks, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this has given you some food for thought. And I, I would not uh, discourage anyone no. who wants to be a DM. Please, please, please put out the effort. Buy the books. Form a group. Create your own world. Have fun. Please do it. Please have fun. Please put out the effort. Yeah, we've had some great laughs in our groups. Yeah, great it, it laughs, can be very fun. fun. It can really social can. interaction, playing yeah. face to face other than online yeah. is just so much more there. You know, I'm not saying don't play online. I prefer we prefer the social yeah. interaction. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for watching Wizards of the Tower. Role play. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All your adventures be epic. And keep on rolling. Thanks.